Hi, I'm Tom Lydon, editor of ETF Trends here in New York at the iShares Connect Conference, and I'm here with Tyler Morty, who's president and co-CIO at Han Investments. Tyler, welcome, it's great to have you with us. Thanks, Tom, good to be here. Listen, we want to talk about emerging markets because it's an area that's been beaten up and unloved, right. but I know you guys have done a lot of work on it lately. We have, so I think a lot of investors have run out of emerging markets. If you look at the fund flows, there's a lot of fund flows out of, out of that sector this year, and I think the danger for a lot of folks is that they're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So emerging markets as a broad asset class, historically, 10 years ago, let's say, yeah. you could just buy as, a, as sort of you know, a one-click, buy an EEM or something yeah. like that. Um, that. That's not the case anymore. We've got some diversification yeah. in different countries, and you need to have sort of a, a selection criteria to select the right countries. So right all sectors. emerging markets are not created equal? Absolutely not. Yeah. No, of course not. That's, that's ridiculous. It's like saying 50% of the world is the same, right? And yeah. if you said that about the developed markets, it, you know, you'd have people would be pretty enraged with that, that statement. So what areas do you like? I mean, it looks like there's a lot of value out there, but right. you know, where are you focusing your attention as, as good opportunities? Well, we have one screen that, that kind of filters out a lot of the country, so we're, we're big into country investing, so yep. we look at um, some, form of, some piece of macro misinformation, as we call it. Um, number two is structural reform that's already in place, so it's been in place for some time. Okay. Not structural reform that's happening today, but something that's been put in place the last few years. And then thirdly, it's got to be a good valuation. And the good news there, Tom, is that valuations relative to their develop, developed market peers are at record lows right now, decade lows. Yeah. So we've got some good values there. So give me some examples. Well, I think we like we like China for sure. China yeah. China is one of those uh, countries that is is sort of a contentious. Uh, country, there's always de good debate on China, but we keep hearing that China's going to slow down, China's going to crash, and we've been hearing that for about five years now. Now there's some credit issues there, but ultimately you have to ask what's reflected in the in the stock market, right? Yep. They've got Chinese banks, for example, trading on five times earnings, Crazy. yielding four percent dividend yields, and so forth. So there's opportunities there. There's a number of other countries as well. What, what about Latin America? Um, yeah, there's a couple countries in there, but we another region that we actually like is Eastern Europe. So we've got the whole Crimea crisis going yeah. on, and there's there's been a lot of indiscriminate liquidation with some of these countries. Poland, as an example. Yeah. So Poland's had the fortuitous uh, uh, experience by not joining the euro. So yes. they've been able to depreciate the currency and pursue that business model of exporting to 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 Europe. And that that country in particular is quickly becoming the go-to. Uh, um, manufacturing zone for European multinationals. So you can you can actually manufacture cheaper in Poland than, than China right now. Unbelievable. Yeah. So let's talk about the 800-pound uh, gorilla, Russia. What do okay. you think? I mean, is it just talk about baby out with the bathwater? Uh, it's a it's a tough one. Um, I, I, we would characterize Russia as a value trap. So Russia is trading on four to five times earnings, um, but you know I think there are some issues there that are, that, that need some time to play out. And I think a better way to play it, and this, this is classic macro for ETF strategists, it's classic macro to look at a situation, and the obvious question is, do you buy Russia or do you not buy Russia? But there's, all, there's a whole host of other ways you can play it. So one, one way we've played it, believe it or not, is we bought Palladium, P-A-L-L. -L. Huh. Palladium happens to be controlled mainly by Russia, 80% of the Palladium um, resourcing there is, is out of Russia. So it's classic macro to look at a situation like that that's topical in the news, and not to go the obvious route, but to take some other piece of information that these all these these cool tools out there yeah. that supply and, and, and play it that way. It's that's unique, what's, that's yeah. what's great about it. Yeah. So you folks have your own strategies that you have available here and we'll hear, hear more and more about those in the coming months, is that right? Absolutely. We're I mean we're Canadian homegrown, but uh, we, we've come into into your market and, and we're yeah. uh, we're here. Well it's good to have you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Tom. Thanks Tom.